I think it's really interesting with having things coming out like a lab grown meat. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. That's- <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to John Venus's podcast where he interviews Mike the Vegan. Let's go. What's going on, everyone? John Venus here. Today, I have a new podcast for you guys, a very special episode. One of the first guests ever to be on the podcast. Right off the bat, you can feel the nervousness of Mike the Vegan. He doesn't appear as confident and as calm collected as he does on his private videos. An honor to have you, man. It's great to be here. Who are you? Let the people know. What your name is, what you do, a little bit about yourself, man. Just a dude who makes YouTube videos. No, I'm Mike the Vegan. I have. What's so funny about that? Just a dude that makes YouTube videos. No, I'm Mike the Vegan. Yeah, Mike the Vegan, a dude that makes YouTube videos. I'm Mike the Vegan. I have a YouTube channel. Um, I feel weird like saying how many subscribers I have, but you I have, have to. A three hundred and twenty-five thousand <laughs> yes, subscribers. I still got more. Why did you just bring that up yourself? Who cares how many subscribers you have? I still got more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whatever. The point is, uh, yeah, uh, whatever. And yeah, I do well, a bunch uh, of science stuff, and a lot of it's, uh, you know, the science of reversing different diseases, preventing. Diseases. Bunch of science cherry picking stuff. That's what you do. Yes, correct. Diseases, as well as the environmental stuff, and you know, the animal stuff tied in as well. Mm-hmm. So that's where I come from. Yeah. Environmental stuff, health stuff, vegan stuff, propaganda stuff. That's where I come from. Yeah, I. Have watched Look at those vegan eyes, man. Crazy. Look how black they are. Uh, Jesus. For, I'd say about three years now. Word. Yeah. Word. <laughs> what? Three years now? <laughs> yeah. How long have you been on YouTube? Four years. Four, Four years. In the first, probably in the first like under 20,000 subscribers. Maybe. Oh, 100%. Awesome. I remember yeah. you were getting like 3,000 views or oh, yeah. like something yeah. like that. So yeah. you've come a long way. And uh, since then, you've become this iconic figure for you know iconic figure yeah correct john like anybody in the vegan scene you're all icons you're all gods demigods at least science or like you know it's it's really hard to make videos that you know are easy to understand and include a lot of scientific information and you like in my opinion you're one of the best in the game um, well, if not you. the I best so yeah. you're helping out a lot of people myself included i watch a lot of your videos cool. So. I just try yeah, cool cool you're absolutely authentic absolutely real absolutely collected calm not nervous at all right really genuine look at those eyes what the hell is going on there Fun thank it. you so whatever <laughs> comes out sometimes i make inappropriate jokes but uh you know <laughs> that's how it is so Tell me a little bit about yourself. Now, how long you've been vegan? Something? Where you where are you from? Are you you know, like how how was it? You know, transitioning to vegan diet. What actually made the change? Like, give me a little okay, you know, cool, vegan. Yeah. If you would tell me the guy is some sort of eccentric artist, some sort of junkie artist that's into drugs, DMT paintings, maybe I would believe you. Origin story. So about eight years ago, my partner Lindy handed me the China study. She was already vegan for four years at that point, so she is OG vegan. Wow. And I just read it in a day because we were on a road trip, and I went vegan right there, or I thought I went vegan, but then I was like oh, maybe I need to eat like some fish every once in a while. Otherwise, you know, I won't have any animal protein or something weird will happen. No libido. And then I just, yeah, so that got me to... Oh, man. And then... (laughs) And then I uh, basically just did a ton of research to do my due diligence, paranoid due diligence, really, at that level, and just looked at a bunch of the research and all the, you know, literature that I could find. Yeah, absolutely paranoid due diligence. Sure. I mean, every single human being has been eating meat for the entire time that humans have been here and now you're going to do the exact opposite but you call yourself paranoid whilst doing that no that is a normal instinct of course you will question a diet that excludes everything that your ancestors ate Mm. and then finally came to the conclusion oh i don't need it or just learning the basics of amino acids Mm. oh you don't need some weird amino acid in fish that's like the magical fish zine or something so so (laughs) he looks so spaced out man it's insane Am I the only one that recognizes this? This is fucking crazy, man. You can see here that they did use a filter. And in the end of the video, I want to do a comparison and lower the saturation. Because this video is already touched up. There's already a coloring filter on it. So was a health aspect that drew you into it and then... 
you looked more in the ethical uh, side totally of things afterwards? Totally, purely or? selfish in the beginning, purely okay. selfish. You know, I was just trying to prevent those diseases that people get down the line. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then I had the, the meat goggles off, as I always say. Mm-hmm. You know, I was no longer participating. And then I was finally able to see the animals and what was going on with the animals. And I've always been into the environmental stuff, so that was just icing on the cake, really. Yeah, amazing, amazing vegan propaganda. Again, if you would truly be into the environment, you would know about rotational farming practices, about regenerative agriculture, so on and so forth. Yeah, amazing. So you've been vegan for how, how long did you say again? Like eight years. Eight, eight years. years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah full is, blown end stage yeah. vegan. I don't know that many people have been vegan eight years, oh, yeah. so that's well, that's pretty cool. Soon there'll yeah. be more. No, there won't be more, Mike. Soon there will be more ex vegans. You have a dropout rate of at least eighty five percent. Yeah, and uh, you, uh, what would you say was the main kind of like uh, challenge that you experienced, <laughs> or you know, positive what's going on with my mic? <laughs> finally made a full switch was there anything in particular that you like noticed I, physically or thing, mentally it, it didn't happen overnight but uh just getting better just getting my acne better like okay. since the age of 15 or 16 i had bad enough acne that it was like what i was probably thinking about in the conversation that okay. i was having at any given time hmm. and I how long did that vegan, last um well until i was you know at least seven years yeah. oh wow okay yeah yeah so six or seven years mm-hmm. and then i went vegan and it got significantly better enough for it to not bother me as much like psychologically yeah it got better but it didn't get away of course it got better because you eliminated probably the processed foods however you still get it because plants contain a lot of sugars which will irritate your skin of course if you would eliminate all of those plants and you would try for example a carnivorous diet you of course would look much better and your acne would disappear Mm -hmm. and then going less processed vegan was what finally made it so i didn't have like a zit every couple days you know yeah that's amazing um Actually, a lot of vegan influencers have experienced the exact same yeah. thing. I had cystic yeah. acne. Brian Turner had cystic yeah. acne. You had he acne. Had the, he had the real Derek acne. had acne. Like, there's yeah. so many people I know that who had acne and have experienced amazing results when switching to a whole food plant. Yeah, but John, come on, let's be honest. Now you did laser therapy, so that doesn't mean that you magically healed your skin. So, on that note, though, do you think, um, you know, maybe through the research you've read or articles or whatever, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> if you were to switch to a vegan diet, but still include a lot of oils and processed foods, do you think wow. that it would, you know, kind of like mm. it, it would be possible to get rid of your Oh, acne? wow. All right, guys. I've been around. I've been in the party scene. And this is, if I wouldn't know any better, a guy that's on speed. This is how he looks like. You are spaced out, man. Look at his jaw, just constantly twitching, his eyes twitching, this nervousness. This happens when you're under the influence of drugs. Why? Because you're excreting a lot of adrenaline, noradrenaline, so on and so forth, right? And this is the exact same behavior that gets stimulated by your starvation. This is what we see here, man. It's really, really shocking. Or do you think you, you had to go all the way in terms of whole well, plant foods? Well, the one thing that did it was me stopping cooking with oil at home, mm. even still eating at restaurants. So, like, mm-hmm. I cut my oil consumption down by, like... Yeah, you should cut down your plant oil consumption. However, you would have no issues if you would use lard or tallow or butter. 60 or 70, maybe 80%. Yeah. And that's when my, my skin cleared up. And, you know, as I, I see it happen, and who knows whether it's the oil or something going on with the salt or whatever, or just like the amount of calories you consume when you go out, maybe Mm -hmm. even boosting insulin in some way. Maybe boosting insulin in some way. By default, you will always boost insulin on a plant-based diet. Name one whole plant food that doesn't contain carbohydrates. But, you know, after eating restaurants for a few days when I'm traveling, sometimes I'll I'll start getting a little bit more acne than I usually would. Right. Yeah, I've noticed that too. Yeah. Oh, you still get acne. And you notice that too, John. Hmm, strange that is. Hmm, interesting. So I want to ask you an interesting mm-hmm. question. Yeah, so interesting. What is the thing that you've learned <laughs> the most? Like, what are a couple of lessons that you learned from being um, an <sighs> activist or a public figure making YouTube videos uh, for these past four years? What is like one of the main lessons that you learned, or things that have you know been kind of like surprising? Wow. Oh, uh, well, just right off the bat, I just feel super lucky that people actually want to watch the videos. Like yeah. when I first posted, and this is encouragement to anyone who's just starting, like when I first so posted humble. my, you know, first, second, third video, they had about 10 views each for like right. the weeks that they were out. And then uh, finally, like Happy Healthy Vegan shared one. It got three oh, views. Oh, it was them, huh? Hmm. Yeah, they, awesome. they shared on their Facebook. 
Oh. And it got awesome. 300 views, and I was like, oh my God. Shout out to Ryan. I'm doing this now because I, I'd actually resigned to just having it in my personal video journal. Mm. This is back That's when shout outs were actually effective. Uh. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> now it doesn't help. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's all the algorithm. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's chaos. Amazing. Uh, so, is, is there anything like in terms of your way of activism or your way of promoting veganism? How no. has that changed throughout the years? Uh, like when you started YouTube, did you have a different approach to how you? talk to people about it or honestly i feel like it's exactly the same oh yeah it's okay. just kind cool. of my personality of like having fun with it getting to the information you certainly look like somebody that has a lot of fun to maybe persuade some people mm -hmm. uh it depends i try to yeah i always try to like think about who i'm talking to yeah. and i don't think that's really changed i'm, I'm just the same i guess as mm -hmm. I was, yeah amazing so amazing. who are your go-to sources for information because you have such knowledge for the scientific and nutritional side of things <laughs> What are your go-to now? Like when you're gonna do a research for a video or something, what are the go-to sources? Well, everybody knows that I always watch all the Dr. Gregor videos, mm. Nutrition Facts. Yes, but Dr. Gregor, NutritionFacts.org. So yes, but I always fan. try to not copy. Big fan, so of like, course, you're a big fan as well. The truth can be right in front of your face. A completely sick looking man. I almost said old man, but that's not true. Gregor is around about 46 years old. Then you have Mike the Vegan in his 30s, I presume. You all look absolutely degenerated. And that's not an insult. That's a fact. Anybody that hasn't the vegan goggles on can see this. It's absolutely saddening to see how malnourished you guys look like. Dr. Gregor or you. To celebrate you as those iconic superstars, the truth holders in that community, just shows how delusional you are. That Gregor's covered i have to have like at least a study in there t that he has not posted on that topic <laughs> that's my goal and so and thankfully some of them are a few years older so i can just find like newer studies on it yeah you have to find a study this is exactly what you guys do this is basically you admitting what you try to do there you try to trump each other you try to prove your point with finding studies you can always find a study to prove your point however if that study is not replicable then you didn't prove anything. And this is what we see in the vegan community over and over and over again. There is one study and it says this. Great. Fantastic. However, it is not replicable. It happened once and that's all there is to it. Now you're going to try to trump the Holy Gregor by posting yet again one more study ridiculous clean all the information i can you know i'll do the searches through you know the the, the new studies that came yeah, out like, like pubmed sometimes although honestly now it's funny i've like trained my google search to become like a study finding machine oh, so it no kind of knows like because i got on someone else's google so yeah, cringy I what i normally do i was like study endometriosis vegan diet or something and it was like weird i'm not getting any of the results i want oh, and then strange. i went back to mine and it was like boom it gives me like five or six <laughs> like because it knows i want to go to uh, pubmed and it knows i want to do all these things and so you have to train your train your dragon yeah for sure motorized dragon oh, that's that amazing cool. so yeah. it's so sickening to see honestly so you're sitting in front of the computer and you're trying to find one more study to prove your point. Meanwhile, you're sitting there with eye bags dark as the ones from Lord Voldemort. Uh, that's, that's amazing. Cool. So yeah, nutritionfacts.org, huge fan. Huge fan. Um, so <laughs> yeah. out of all of the studies, all of the videos you've done throughout the years, what would be your main tips for someone who's looking to either go vegan or who is already vegan who wants to optimize their health like what is like mm. a couple of yeah. these main things that you want honestly to why do you even want to make people vegan at this point i don't get it really why do you want to i eat predominantly carnivore i couldn't care less if you eat carnivore or not get across because what i have, <clears> you know i'm trying not to talk too much about it but we, we all know how some influencers have blame the vegan diet oh, for yeah, yeah, yeah. you know oh, ruining yeah. their health and that kind of stuff and <laughs> their libido especially and <laughs> no, uh like yeah, exactly maybe did you see the jaw what is going on there man you're completely psyched out on adrenaline there are a couple of options here either you're on adderall or you're on speed or you're vegan so you know what first what can people do to optimize their diet and then maybe we can touch on why you think people you know uh, fail on it yeah. Starving. I, mean, I think Starving. optimizing, well, first of all, everyone has their own limitations of what they can do and what they can't do. And there are people who are probably just going to fail no matter what they do. Mm -hmm. Like, I hate to yeah. say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're probably going to fail no matter what they do. <laughs> and, you know, do some batch cooking. But not us vegans. Cleaning <laughs> up their diet at home. Mm -hmm. And that can actually yeah. be good. Because Maybe clean up your diet from all the toxic plants. That would be good. And then, you know, 
have a cleaner diet at home, but then still make sure you get the nutrients. So it's always just pop a couple days on. <laughs> make sure you get all the nutrients. How will you? How will you get all the nutrients if you're a vegan? That is an oxymoron. You can't. Please just make sure you get enough calories. <laughs> make sure you're getting enough of those things. And then why not? Maybe if you're really paranoid about some weird brain fog or some some. I don't know, ethereal. And maybe if you're paranoid of some brain fog. Because everybody that talked about brain fog is lying, right? That's a narrative in the vegan cult. Typical cult mentality. By now, we have thousands of people coming out and saying that they experienced brain fog on a vegan diet. I mean, you see the goji mans and the other vegan YouTubers that need 1 billion jump cuts to get through one video. However, Mike the Vegan will tell you, you're just paranoid. Just paranoid. Just say take DHA. Some say don't, but at least Do get personally take it? I take it uh, occasionally. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Same. Yeah. Very yeah, yeah, sporadically. Yeah. Just trying to make sure it's like in my system at certain points. But then I try yeah. Make sure it's in your system. Make sure all the solvents are in your system as well. Check out my first Beyond Veganism podcast with Bart K, where we talked about the extraction method of DHA algae oil, and you'll be surprised. All right. I make sure I have those mm -hmm. omega threes in the ALA as the precursor in enough of an amount that it does the job, lowers the inflammation. Nice. Nice. That's how I roll. Yeah, that's how I roll. That's how you roll. You basically eat more omega-6s than 3s by default because you're choosing plants. Plant oils are very inflammatory. That's how you roll. So would you say that calorie restriction is like one of the biggest things you see people doing wrong? I from think these emotionally. Fail? I think a lot of these people are emotionally quitting. Emotionally quitting. Do you have it in you? Can you do one more vegan rep? Can you do one more vegan set? Can you do one more vegan year? Can you do it? You're quitting emotionally, you pussy. Um, yeah, before you're quitting for I any real reason. That. Yeah, and it's a lot of times it's calorie restriction or mm -hmm. it's it's either calorie restriction, ongoing calorie restriction, or mm. ongoing just like psychological or like social isolation. Those right. are the two things that, that it's more than any, any one nutrient that's happening. That's happening. So I'm just going to say something to say something and essentially i'm saying nothing but listen to me i'm mike the vegan I view it. yeah so just to touch Look on at those a, nervous cracking but like, teeth you know just this carnivore junkie really has, junkie you know i feel like it's dying down a little bit now oh, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I hope but yeah um it seems the like the carnivore movement is dying right now i hope i certainly hope Okay, let me check. You can certainly hope that the trend dies off. However, you can see since 2018, we have a steady progression. The carnivore diet is still highly searched, highly researched, and veganism is dying off slowly. So again, the vegans are twisting the reality of things. In real life, veganism is dying off. Your trend is not growing at all. Like a lot of these uh, people have the same arguments against veganism and um, you know that it's a, a globalist agenda or you know agenda mm. 21 or whatever mm -hmm. they call it and there's a lot of conspiracy theories is that theories the 21 going day on. challenge that you did the vegan <laughs> yeah. one 21 day vegan making challenge making the connections <laughs> exactly. it's all connected <laughs> yeah Whoa, what so a lame joke. what like what can you say to people who have kind of like junkie not been junkie. brainwashed but been kind of somehow they they were sent the videos uh, to carnivore channels or mm. like doctors like sean baker or bard k or whatever um what would you say to people who are you know listening to them but then also john you're an absolute denial they've been sent those links to those guys right how can they get out of it again how can they return to the church of veganism how can they you know exactly that bart k and sean baker do great work they do great objective work and predominantly both of those guys agree that they are against processed foods it's not so much about the vegan agenda you try to put everything into one basket there it's not about the conspiracy theories much more it is against the processed shit foods that veganism led to because if you look into the success of veganism you will see that your biggest success was to create Beyond Burgers, Impossible Burgers, and cater that shit to fast food restaurants. Other than that, globally, we're eating more 
meat into vegans to try to uh, find out yeah. what the right you know kind of answer yeah. is like what would you kind of recommend people to how to think about this whole thing because it's like two different extremes at least you're admitting that it is an extreme two very opposite things but at the same time you know there is a big difference in you know the the amount of research yeah what is the difference how do you john people who are kind of on the fence and look at both yeah. sides to go about it well if you're looking at the body of vegan research versus the body of carnivore research you're looking at like a bible length document like the old testament versus a <laughs> trifold that you pick up like on a table it's like there's no research on the carnivore diet pretty much oh uh, yeah of course sure so then show me exact exact studies that have been conducted only on vegan populations you won't find anything the science that you are referring to is plant-based at best of course that is highly debatable again and that would be too long for this video we can go into that in another one however you know exactly that those populations that you are talking about are plant-based at best they're still consuming animal foods now I will give you that. I will admit that on the carnivore diet, there is much more research yet to be conducted. Of course. It's all, oh, there's Facebook groups with some anecdotes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're so great. And yeah, maybe if somebody, you know, drops dairy, that's dairy allergy and, and these things and drops sugar, mm -hmm. there's going to be things that get better. But, you yeah. know, looking at the system long term and looking at uh, what happens with the arteries mm -hmm. and all these things, there's just no, no reason to believe it. You know, it's... Oh, yeah, what happened with the arteries? Tell us what happens with the arteries. If you look at the carbon scan of Sean Baker or at Dr. Burks, for example, just more anecdotes, I know. However, you will see zero calcification. So what exactly happens there? What happens when you have no sugar in your diet and you're eating predominantly animal fats? Will you get calcification? Your arteries respond to inflammation. That is the calcification in your arteries. That won't happen if you do not eat sugars. It's another low-carb diet, and low-carb diets from the meta-analysis of 30% increased all-cause mortality. There's no reason to believe there's mm -hmm. some magical thing about it. Yeah. I mean, they'd probably argue mm -hmm. differently, but I disagree. A hundred percent. I'm yeah, the authority. Like, what would Listen you say? To me. How, how do you see the vegan movement uh, moving forward? You've been vegan for eight years. I mean, let's face it, right? Without going too deep into the science, as I said, this is just a response video, a little reaction video. However, you are comparing two diets. One diet being totally nutritionally deficient, needs supplementation, right? Has no bioavailable DHA, EPA, B12, D3, so on and so forth. And the other diet does. The other diet on top has no processed foods and no sugars. Which diet is better? Hmm. I need a study. How, how do you see the vegan movement uh, moving forward? You've been vegan for eight years. You how certainly look like somebody that has been vegan for eight years. End stage veganism. Evolving from now. Uh, how has it changed wow. and how is it? Okay, well, yeah, I mean, we're looking at a, I think it's, a, it's good things are happening. I mean, we, you know, if you're looking at YouTube, for example, yeah. we had like a little peak of, of interest, but I think that's because it was something new mm -hmm. and it's sort of chilled out a little bit. But if you look at total Google trends, they're still going up. No, it's dying out, essentially. It's dying out. The last year, especially, it was very, very detrimental to veganism. Pretty much everybody dropped out. Raw Lyman, Raw Vana, Tim Sheaf, Vegetal Police, and many, many more. Like web trends globally are still going up. And that's more because, you know, YouTube can become a little no, bit of a microcosm. Mm -hmm. But I do want more people to get out there and create more YouTube channels, create more content yeah, and, you know you're watching or listening please yeah. just get on it it's worth it yeah do it and why not and learn editing worst worst thing that happens is you learn how to edit and produce videos it's 100%. like oh no yeah people pay to do that <laughs> yeah. um but then in the future so um i think it's really interesting with having things coming out like a lab grown meat mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's <laughs> yes exactly so as i just said the only progress that you have the only win for the vegan community is the processed junk food and the lab-grown meat. People understand that veganism does not work. People won't get convinced by your vegan ideology. So therefore, you will try to sell them fake meat. You will try to sell them absolute Frankenstein meat. That is the vegan movement. That is the end game here. And you, John, admitted as well that you are interested in lab-grown meat. Of course, you cannot crave something that you never tried. So therefore, you just admit it indirectly that you are craving meat. You guys are pushing, and this is the real conspiracy here, you're pushing those big companies to create more fake products, more processed shit foods instead of eating whole foods. That's the vegan movement for you. Going to be hitting more and more. And so it's, you know, ethically. Yeah, sure. Ethically. Fantastic. Mm. How do you create 
lab-grown meat. You need to feed it something, right? It's ethically better. Okay, a little excursion here. So, as for right now, to create lab-grown meat, you need bovine growth serum. How do you get that? Hmm, you need to get that out of a calf's fetus, out of a little cow fetus. Okay, because the quality is lowered of the bovine growth serum, if you would give that fetus anesthesia, you have to extract it whilst it's fully conscious, as conscious as a fetus can be, of course. You have to ram a huge syringe into the heart of that little fetus and extract the bovine growth serum. Of course, you will have to kill the cow as well before that, right? Now you extract that and now you're growing lab-grown meat, super ethical. Now you need to feed those muscle cells. How do you do that? With corn, with soy, with pea protein isolates. You need to feed them. So at best, if you would get a one-to-one -one conversion rate, which is highly unlikely, probably would get something on the lines of 0 0.8, 0 0.7 conversion rate of plant protein to muscle meat. How is that more sustainable? How is that more ethical? Meanwhile, if you would have predominantly grass-fed cows that are supplemented with some grain, you will get a much higher protein yield because cows are able to convert grass into bioavailable proteins for us humans. It is absolutely ridiculous. It is a pipe dream. But this is the best that vegans can come up with. Major restaurants mm -hmm. is totally changing Disgusting. the game. Yeah. For sure. Um, it's I just think more mainstream in general, right? Yeah, yeah. it's interesting yeah. when it's like no longer the new thing. And that's what yeah. you saw on YouTube is like it was no longer the new thing. But even though more people are doing mm. it, it was like, oh, like it's not as exciting. No, not more people are doing it. For every vegan that comes into the cult, you have four people dropping out. So therefore, it stays all the same all the time. There is no growth to your shit movement. You to watch, you know, you only need to watch a few what I eat in a day videos before you know what yeah. to eat in a day. Mm -hmm. And so oh yeah? Strange. I've been vegan for four years. I know many people that have been vegan up to 15 years and they still didn't figure out what to eat in a day because it doesn't work. Oh, that's the new vegans that watched all those videos and a, a lot of vegan Look at content. this little junkie. Like, I've heard a lot, a lot of people come to me and it's like, oh yeah, I love, I watch your channel so much when I first went vegan. And I'm like, why don't you watch it anymore? <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, uh, why don't you watch well. me more? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why don't you watch me? <laughs> and so it's hard. So I'm trying to like cater to long-term vegans, cater to new vegans. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And so it's hard. I mean, you can't predict the future. That's what you have to do. It is essentially like the niche that Goji Boy, Berry Boy found. You're going to just cater to the sick people that have issues due to your diet. They've got issues due to your diet. Now send me your shit and I'm going to fix you. Never going to happen. So therefore, stay subscribed. One day we will. Is I'm hoping to see major guideline changes that will mm -hmm. shift people in that direction. Mm -hmm. You know, like Canada. Yeah, amazing. And yeah, amazing. Amazing. So Absolutely. The Canada food Social guys. issue where you have this social barrier to going vegan. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I'm hoping for. Because then it'll just the dam will be broken. 100%. Yeah. Uh, like the, the last question I want to ask you, how... Honestly, John, come on, man. I'm not talking to you as a vegan now. I'm talking to you as a bodybuilder, somebody that's into fitness. You know exactly that that Canada food guide is absolute crap. It's just carbs, just grains. That shit will give you diarrhea, will make you bloated, will give you zero gains. And it's not healthy. You know that. At, like the, the last question I want to ask you, how do you see yourself like in terms of your actual job like youtube do you see yourself doing youtube for a very long time or social it's media in general thing, like yeah. spreading yeah, that's a funny thing or do you see yourself venturing what's a real funny thing is that everybody that is long enough on a vegan diet gets the soy voice to that's funny else. yeah it's a concern because a lot of it is you know a lot of youtubers burn hot and then they burn out and then it's done yeah. and so my goal is to be like very piecemeal about it one mm. video a week not doing two nice. or three and burning myself out most of the yeah. time um and and just keeping it going because mm. i'd want to keep doing it for as long as possible what keeps you going um, a lot of it is just like the messages I get of people who have reverse disease or some people I met here like a woman who reversed her hypothyroidism I just talked to and I'm like mm -hmm. oh my gosh that's amazing right. people just feeling better that's fantastic so such a philanthropist love it latest I just talked to amazing just left and right got a message of someone I just posted on Instagram like a few days ago of their cholesterol dropped by 100 points after wow. you know why is that a good thing because Ansel Key said so Mm -hmm. doing it so things like that uh mm -hmm. are major major for me to keep 100%. going and it just helps for me to get enough of my chill time and relaxation and then i can just like crank it out yeah. and and do that yeah well mm -hmm. i mean you are one of the biggest influencers in the vegan space and hopefully it just keeps going and look at the job yeah, <laughs> you on all your success so far. it's been <laughs> amazing to follow your journey oh uh, jesus start. christ and hopefully we get to make more of these podcasts Absolutely, or videos yeah. together so uh, yeah, we can do like so a long fun. distance one if it's not too hard yeah how yeah. fun is this camp 
about though? It's so. really good. Yeah. I mean, I didn't mm-hmm. really like sleep last night because yeah. there was so much noise because everyone's right. having too good of a time. Yeah. But other than that, like just all the awesome food and yeah. awesome people. Where else you get 7,000 vegans mm-hmm. camping together? Yeah. It's crazy. Staying awake yeah, on that sugar rush. A massive strip of food options. Like it's just, <laughs> what is it, like 30 or 40 yeah. places. Have you had anything good yet? I had a good curry. There was like a mm. tali, which is like a large nice. plate of Indian food. I had so like nice. a, a bunch of like curry and dal and stuff on it. That was really good. I had a mm. sushi burrito, uh, which was really good. Sushi with no raw fish. Sounds amazing. <laughs> have to because we've been traveling around like yeah. it's not even a question at this point like, <laughs> <laughs> well mike it's been a pleasure thank yeah. you so much for all right <laughs> and uh swipe yeah, off my sweaty hands uh, <laughs> youtube channel instagram links will be in the description box if you're watching this on youtube wow. if you're listening okay that was hard to watch now i'm gonna blend in a color graded corrected version so this is what it probably looks like this video has been color graded of course and you can see that it looks much, much worse than Mike the Vegan's usual video. So it looks absolutely terrible once you see him in real life, in person and not in his studio. It's absolutely horrific to watch, absolutely saddening. As I said many, many times on this channel, every time I start reacting to those videos in the beginning, it's always a lot of fun. However, after a while, you can't help but feel compassion and be empathetic towards those people because it is just saddening. It is like making fun at people that are starving. And that is, of course, not funny at all. Be it Dr. Gregor, be it Mike the Vegan, you name it. They look absolutely terrible. As I said, you can't really tell if this guy is a vegan or a crack junkie, a speed junkie, absolutely spaced out, absolutely methed out and whatnot. Really, really terrible. He has those dark circles under his eyes, by no means a healthy individual. You don't need a scientist to tell you. All right, guys, but that's it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. If you want to support the channel, all the links are in the description box below. Links for merchandise, Patreon links, subscribe star links, Amazon links as well, where you can support the channel simply by shopping on Amazon. There is no extra cost for you. But this is it for today. As always, much love and peace.